Okay, so I'm back again and have a completely new file with no material. And in this session, I'll show you something called ambient occlusion that also is good to use here. So uh, we can start right away. Uh, select this base as I normally do right now and then we add material to it. So I go to the material properties, select new and then I have it here. And we can add the ambient occlusion already in directly. So it's just to press shift A, input ambient occlusion as you have here and then we get it. And here you have color and you have ambient occlusion out and we can use this one and take that directly to the base color and perhaps you saw some difference but not so much i can take it away uh, really really white and i can put it in here uh, perhaps something here but not much it's very very subtle very small information you can see it mostly here here you can see we have dark here and if i take it away you have still a white here so there you can see it uh, so what we need to do uh, here is often to uh, increase the contrast by filtering out uh, the values that are not contributing so much. Uh, we can do that in two ways. We can use a color ramp, which is very visual, or we can use a map range. So it's uh, up to you. I prefer when I do node groups to use the map range because that we can then tweak from outside the node group and the color ramp it's hard to reach so if i can then i use the map range but it's up to you we can start with color ramp because it's very visual so i press shift a and then i go to converter and the color ramp put that in here and if i take this slider here and create more and more black you will see that it will get more and more black here as well. And if I have it like this, just as a starting point, I can then add this material to all the colored part in the same way that I did previously. So I can go to the colored metal here and select everything except the base, and then press Control, add the base, and Control L, and select materials. And now, we have that on everything directly. So uh, it's not like the vertex paint that you have to do it one by one. You have everything in instantly as soon as you work with this like that. Okay, so what do we have here and how does it work and so on? So now you can see if I just take it away a bit here, uh, like that. Now you can see it's almost white here, but not so white here. So already now you can see that perhaps you need uh, different values in depending on if it's this part or if it's this part and so on. And that is why I would like to use the map range instead of a color ramp. But we can go to that part later on. First, we need to know what is ambient occlusion. Well, ambient occlusion is a way to calculate where the shadows should be if we have like a, an ambient surrounding. So, so we have a sky with a light that doesn't have any direction. It's just all over the place. So if it's just all over the place coming from above in some way, where do we uh, get the shadows? That is what ambient occlusion is telling us. And that adds a realism to whatever we're doing. So even if we did this brand new version, we could add ambient occlusion to increase the realistic feeling to add more shadows into uh, the end result of the long term here. Another way that is good with this is that since we now know where the sun should be when we're working with this, we can see here that we hardly get any sun at all here, for instance. And uh, same with other places here that we don't have any sun. sun. Uh, then we also know uh, if the sun is not reaching, reaching those places, 
then we don't have any rain that reaches those places as well. So it's a good way of seeing where do a wind, sun, rain and other stuff reach this long term most or uh, perhaps not at all. So, so that is a good way. So let's say that you have a painted thing and the sun is uh, really uh, on that thing all the time. Then you know uh, from experience, I think, that if you have a part that has been in the sun for ages and then you have a part that hasn't seen the sun, then that part that has been in the sun is much, much paler than the other part. So ambient occlusion doesn't have to work with shadows. It can also be that it can be an, an information for you where should it be uh, a bit paler and where should it be more color into this, more saturation. So we can take away the saturation on those parts uh, where it's white here because there the sun always shine and where we have black parts here well the sun does not reach that part so we have the color left so it's a really good way to control uh, different types of coloring when we have something that is going to be a little bit older aging in a good way then we use the ambient occlusion the ambient occlusion also have uh, some uh, parameters here uh, we don't have to think so much about them. Uh, I can take this down a bit and now I can see it's very soft. But if you increase the samples, it gets a lot harder. Uh, however, increasing the samples also mean a lot of time to calculate everything. So take it to uh, 10, 15, something like that. It's enough to tell you where the line should be drawn. So that is one thing. The other thing that you can do is right now, uh, you can see that uh, this part here, for instance, can take it down here. This part here is really, really dark. Uh, why is that? Well, it's because it has this type of lid uh, at the top here. So it prevents the sun from reaching this part here. So other parts are like included in this calculation. So you can see the same here. It's darker here because you have the handle here that prevents the sun from reaching this part here. If you want to take away that, then you just press only local here and then it calculates uh, only every object. And what should we have that to? Well, then we are a little bit close to what Vertex Paint is doing because the sun has a hard time reaching those places where we also have a hard time reaching. So, in, you know, where we have like edges that, that uh, prevent us from reaching things or we have two planes that are very near each other, then we can use only local. And if I now drag that up a bit, like that, then you can see it's very, very similar to our vertex paint that we had before. So we get this line here where we have a lot of dirt, or we get here and we get it uh, on all those small places here on the sides here. And it's not exactly the same, but it's very, very close. So what I like to use this for when, when you press only local is that these places they are the places where if we say that it rains and so on then these places is also the places where the rain stays a little bit longer so here it will stay a bit longer uh, the same here when it goes up a bit here then it will be so that it uh, stays here as well and here of course it's completely black it will be there for ages. And if you think the next step, what will happen if the rain is there all the time? Well, it will start to rust. So uh, if you press only local and you drag this up, 
we then have an excellent tool to find all the places where the rust normally will arrive first. So all the places around here will be a lot of rust. Uh, we can see that later on in uh, the reference images that this part here is the one where we have the most uh, rust that is in, in this here. So two different functions. One to see where we get the color a bit paler and the other one to find rust. That is really, really good to use the ambient occlusion for. So now you have two tools, the vertex color and you have the ambient occlusion. But there's a lot of tools to work with. These are very effective, but there are of course others. So uh, let's go to the next tool in the next session. See you there. Bye for now.